Um, I'm a methods editor in Cochrane Public Health, and my research interests uh, relate to the application of econometric methods, uh, like difference and differences and regression discontinuity to public health evaluation and evidence synthesis. The advisory group for this uh, project uh, is Beverly Shea, Lisa Barrow, Peter Tugwell, Julian Higgins, and Jen Hilgart. The aims of this project um, attempt to address the challenges that arise when uh, review teams aren't able to uh, implement Robin's Eye fully in their review. So of course, Robin's Eye is the recommended tool by the Cochrane Scientific Committee for the uh, risk of bias assessment of non-randomized studies of interventions. Uh, but there are a few situations in which uh, it might not be possible or appropriate to uh, use fully. Um, one of those might be that there are other designs uh, to be included um, in the review for which Robin's Eye does not yet have uh, signaling questions. Um, another is the uh, fact that Robin's Eye is still bedding in and training materials and full guidance are still being developed. Um, and there's also a consideration of audiences beyond Cochrane who um, might look to Cochrane for guidance and help when they don't necessarily have the expertise or the resources to uh, implement a tool like Robin's Eye that requires a, a high degree of um, expertise in epidemiology and research methods. So uh, the aim of this project is uh, first of all to agree a list of criteria against which it would be possible to judge different non-randomized study uh, risk of bias assessment tools. Then to start to operationalize those criteria by producing an initial matrix that would allow us to uh, judge what might be preferred or acceptable tools uh, against their appropriateness for different types of non-randomized studies. And then to outline the additional work that will be required because uh, as Jamie said about her project, this is um, something that could be a textbook or a life's work. And uh, we're only doing kind of first steps to, to address this uh, thorny issue. Now, we looked at systematic reviews of risk of bias tools for assessing non-randomized studies of interventions. And there are hundreds, probably three or 400, starting from a, an HTA that John Deeks uh, et al. did in uh, 2003, which looked at 194 different tools and ever, including that HTA and since then, um, no assessments have identified a preferred tool or even criteria on which people could agree um, a preferred tool could be identified. Uh, but what we did do from the systematic reviews that we found was extract characteristics that can be used to describe and assess tools. Um, so in the first instance, we proposed to, to look at these uh, seven tools or groups of tools with Robin's eye as a kind of baseline comparison or, or gold standard. And we'll be interested to know if there are any other tools that your review group um, or your author team particularly use a great deal that you think it would be really helpful to see in this initial comparison. So the criteria that were extracted from the systematic reviews that have uh, assessed uh, various um, risk of bias tools for NRSI against each other we've grouped uh, into these kinds of categories. Um, the structure of the tool, so for example, whether it offers algorithms, whether it has accompanying guidance, the actual content of the tool, so what uh, bias domains are addressed and, and what evidence base is reflected in the tool's content, how the tool was developed, um, whether the performance of the tool has been measured, um, for example, in terms of its uh, inter and intra relator, rater reliability. Um, some, some criteria about the ease of use 
such as how long it takes to learn to use the tool or to um, implement and execute an appraisal with the tool. And finally, how uh, the tool is consistent with the purposes of Cochrane, for example, does it support outcome-based assessments? Uh, does it lead to a judgment of certainty that's compatible with grade, for example? And the, the next step in this project is to uh, survey the membership of the bias methods group, the NRSI working group, uh, and, and the NRSI grade working group um, to gather opinion about what the characteristics might be of tools that are, first of all, acceptable for use in Cochrane reviews, and then what might be uh, the preferred uh, standard for, for tools. Okay. So when we do come to the discussion, I'd love to hear from you about your experiences of uh, using uh, risk of bias for reviews of non-randomized studies of, of interventions um, and whether, for example, uh, you prefer to try to find one tool that addresses multiple study designs or whether uh, you end up using multiple tools so that you have one tool that's specific for each design and what kind of help or guidance would be most useful in your view. Thanks very much. Thanks very much, Michelle. Does anyone have any um, questions they'd like to ask now? Any, anything, on cl any clarification or? Oh, um, Tess. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Tess. Hi, I just wondered, um, I was just curious about your criterion of having good inter-rater reliability for your tools because I've done a lot of reviews and um, use various tools, lots of different ones and for for RCTs and non-randomized. And I, I often find it's in the discussion between the people doing the bias assessments that you you come like pennies drop, you understand more. Um, some people you're working with have less experience and some people have better experience. And I just think that for me personally, I don't think interrelated reliability is useful. I think it's, it feels like a red herring to me. I would agree with you. Um, and generally, when these uh, are measured about different risk of bias tools, the performance of these tools is quite poor. Um, so personally, I wouldn't say that there would be a kind of benchmark of reliability that would be useful. Um, but people might be interested, for example, only in knowing if that reliability had ever been measured. Um, but opinions will differ, and that's why it will be helpful to, uh, to survey the, the membership and see, you know, if, if a majority say, actually, that is neither important nor useful in selecting a tool, then with confidence, we can leave that out of the comparison. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Tess. Um, Andrea's asked if you can share the slide again with all the various tests. Can you do that, Michelle? Is that okay? I, I can. And Ella, I don't know whether you had a question. I thought I saw her hand up. Oh, no, I was clapping. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ella. Andrew's the slide do you wanted to see. Yeah, and these tools, I'm sorry for the brevity, the, the Newcastle Ottawa scale, um, the, the Cochrane Review Group um, Effective Practice and Organization of Care has a, a long-standing tool that considers um, interrupted time series uh, control before and after and before and after studies and control. Um, the uh, Effective Public Health Practice Project tool, um, which is a kind of one-stop shop that considers randomized and non-randomized studies within one tool. Clarity is a group of tools um, that I think have been mainly adapted from other tools, including Cochrane and possibly Sign. And these tools are made available on the uh, Distiller SR uh, web platform. 
Next, the Joanna Briggs Institute suite of tools. Um, personally, I've found that there are some study designs that uh, I cannot find a tool for other than through JBI. Uh, and finally, SIGN, uh, the Scottish Intercollegiate Guidelines Network. Um, many years ago, developed bespoke critical appraisal tools for cohort uh, case control and single cohort studies. Uh, so this is uh, a selection that was made based on discussions in the bias methods and NRSI uh, working groups within Cochrane as tools that they frequently see used in reviews or that frequently come up um, for, for queries from authors and from methods editors. But it's by no means, um, you know, a list of recommendations, uh, a list of top tools, or, or even a reflection uh, of the vast number of tools that exist. And I think we just have another question from Rachel, and then we should move on to the next presentation. Uh, yeah, thanks, Michelle. Um, I just have a bit of a concern. Um, I guess I'm probably thinking in a very Cochrane-centric way, um, with kind of with looking at multiple tools to address, you know, to address the issue of non-randomized studies. And I'm wondering whether perhaps as, as Cochrane, we should be really focusing on, on Robin's eye and, and kind of making, and making that really work for all the different designs as much as we can, just so that we can kind of offer kind of really simple guidance to authors. Mm -hmm. And also because Robin's eye, of course, is kind of, you know, is a mirror of, of Rob too you know, and they're, and they're linked and we're encouraging people to use Rob too. Um, so that would just be my kind of my slight concern um, with, with looking at multiple tools. Yeah, absolutely. I, I sympathize. I, I think everyone here sympathizes with that view. Um, and it's not either or this project um, or Robin's Eye, because um, as you'll see, there's also parallel work going on to help the implementation of Robin's Eye. Um, more the problem is First of all, you know, right now, guidance is needed um, about other tools because they're being used and editors struggle to know uh, if, you know, these tools are, are justified in their selection. Um, but also, at least for the foreseeable future, um, the short term, I don't know, uh, perhaps three, five years, um, it will take time for uh, Julian's team to develop Robin's Eye to encompass all of the potential designs, things like instrumental variables, um, regression discontinuity, synthetic controls, and then there are also new designs that emerge. Um, so I think there will always be some scope, some need for consideration of other tools. But I think you're absolutely right that, that betting in Robin's eye is, is really important. And I hope this project won't be seen as being somehow in competition with that, but rather as a kind of supplement to that. Yeah, but I, I just wanna um, add as well that the Cochrane Handbook uh, recommends Robin's eye. It has a, a chapter on it, but it does say that other tools sort of can be used if it looks at the similar elements that are built into the Robin's eye. Um, tool and I think that's where we've seen different review groups using different tools or different author groups preferring to use different tools and just having a map of them all so that we can understand you know what the differences are and what each each does is going to be very useful as a um, as a as a starting point for, for further work. Yeah 